The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 671 Starting to Untangle Will this be plenty? Maple asked hopefully, standing over a tray of simple sandwiches. I didn't really feel like I should take the time to make something fancy. The bedroom where Starlight had left Harshwater was packed. The Pegasus herself made an aggressive point of taking up the entire bed, reveling as hard as she could in having real accommodations despite her injuries and loudly letting the others know. Maple had arrived with Gerardo, and while Gerardo and Shinespark had gone back to the cave to assist Valet with Yanavan, both Felicity and Niala were here, the latter propped up in a corner, and the former reclining in a library chair Maple had carried in. Starlight herself was glued to her mother's side, still moonglassed, but finally off her hooves now that Maple's food was ready. Looks good, just give me anything. Harshwater waved a bruised hoof. Maple took a huge bite, having left a tray where Harshwater could easily reach it. It really didn't feel like three days when I first woke up, but now? Wow, uh, she chuckled weakly. Nearby, Felicity wiped her brow. It may have felt like less to you, darling, but imagine how much longer it was to us. Every capable pony had flown off to that cave, and there was no one left but Slipstream, Amber, and a bunch of invalids to worry about to go after you. The first hours weren't so bad, mostly because I was unconscious, but after that... A pained look crossed her face. Did he really not realize that it had been so long? Yala asked from her wall. When I wasn't put together, it was like no time had passed at all, and I was helping Shinespark fight just an hour ago. Maple shook her head. It's... shadowy? I don't remember if I dreamed, but it felt like we were only there for minutes. As harsh water weighed in on the passing of time, Starlight pressed against Maple's side, eating a little, but not really needing it. Being here, surrounded by ponies who were passing friends at worst all the way up to her mother, she didn't feel quite as concerned by food. What bothered her more was how and what she was going to tell. Not only did Maple not realize she was lighter, but none of her friends had any awareness of what had happened in the dream cave. They didn't know she had the rest of the nightmare modules. Of course, that part didn't matter because she was never going to use them again. It shouldn't matter. But just having the secret in her mind, having something she couldn't tell, pressed a chain of loneliness against her heart. She'd have to tell it at some point, she knew, for her sake of mind, if absolutely nothing else. Things have been absolutely uneventful and filled with everything happening here at the same time, Felicity was saying. Which is to say, it's quite a huge deal that nothing happened while you were gone. That Granada mare is locked up with a damper around her horn to prevent it from lighting. Shinespark and I have been recovering with me serving as translator for our new dependents whenever I'm feeling capable of it. Amber is taking care of us all, the Vosidelians are licking their own wounds and happy to leave us alone in exchange for truce. Things have been... well, they've been. Amber is exhausted, Niala added. It must be hard caring for so many injured ponies you can't understand with so little help. Slipstream is tired too. You should encourage her when she wakes up. Amber? I already did, Maple said with a rueful smile. She hugged me and asked if she could finally sleep in. We'll have a proper reunion once she's taken some time to care for herself. I'll have to see Slipstream, though. Harsh water stuffed another sandwich in her mouth, eating faster as the conversation turned to the battle and its fallout, until all of a sudden she stopped, winced, and slowly swallowed. It sounds like your diplomacy didn't really go well, did it? Felicity winced back. It could have been a lot worse, and by that, I mean outright war could have escalated to extinction. I was rather in danger of losing my life myself, you know. Harshwater's ears pressed down, and she pushed the platter away. I... sorry. Does it help if I'm not too happy with myself right now? Who would it be likely to help? Maple gave her a gentle look. It wouldn't change anything that happened. That's not really telling me there's something I can do, Harshwater nervously whined, biting her lip. Look, I really, really would rather not play the pity card, but I'm kind of in a terrible situation right now, and I hate to derail this conversation, uh, she twiddled her hooves, fidgeting, but I just talked you into a war, and 
did nearly kill your friends, and when I tried to do a tiny thing to thank you for going out of your way for me... Uh, she glanced quickly at Felicity, then averted her gaze. Darling, if you think I'm about to vengefully maul you, I'm happy to say I don't have it in me. Felicity waved a hoof and frowned. And do you mind not looking at me like that? You really don't seem to like Cerosians. Can you blame her? Niel interjected. When she's been fighting them for survival for the past few weeks? Felicity deflated. Quite right. Just harsh water, please. You're so terrified of all of us, I can smell it in the air. I am not, Harshwater snapped and faltered. Maybe. Eh, she glanced at Maple, clearly reluctant to explain. Starlight got it. Before Maple could reply, she stood up, flicking her tail. You want to come with us? Harshwater's ears went back down. Well, I chatted with Olay. Maple took a slight breath and nodded. Oh, I see. Her eyes settled on harsh water, and she smiled reassuringly. We're not leaving until we're sure everyone is happy enough with how things have worked out that there won't be more fighting, she promised. And if that involves anyone coming with us, we have a big ship. Not big enough for all the Varsidelians at once, and we're not going to Varsidel, but a big one. I don't get it. Harshwater looked dumbly at her, then quickly perked up. But, eh, I'm not going to complain. Not like I won't just get thrown away like an old towel if I go back to Kiro. She spat the griffin's name, briefly scowling. My chances really are better with you. Just don't trick me into any suicide missions, okay? I'll be loyal, even if I mess up. Maple got up, walked over, and sat on the edge of the bed, putting a hoof on Harshwater's shoulder. The only suicide missions here are volunteer only, and Valet always makes sure everyone gets back alive. It sounds like you've got a lot to deal with, but maybe save that for when you're better if you can? She smiled again. Right now, you're our guest, and you look like you have a lot of recovering to do. Yeah, I'll talk with Alay later, Harshwater groaned into her pillow, no longer fighting the bed to stay upright. Felicity tapped her four hooves. Well, darlings, what do we do now? I, for one, am still rather tired after that ordeal, and I imagine the rest of you have some... things to take care of. Whatever those things may be. But would it perhaps be prudent to discuss what we do next? Maple nodded at her. That might have to wait until Valet and the others get back, since they're in charge, but it would also be mostly up to you, since you're the only one who can talk to both sides. Felicity the Peacemaker, Felicity sighed, getting out of her chair and climbing gingerly to her hooves. Well, seeing as I woke up for this, I think I'm going to try to get a little bit more sleep before my services are needed next. I'll see you all later. Bye! Niala waved with a metal wing. Maple nodded, and harsh water grunted face down in the bed. Starlight just watched Felicity, and right before the doorway, the mare turned her head and made eye contact. Oh, and Starlight? Huh? Starlight blinked. I've noticed a, shall we say, Felicity fidgeted, an unusual lack of commentary relating to your present coloration, dear. Probably something that's already been discussed in this friend group before I joined up with you. She fixed her with a knowing look. But I'd very much like to talk to you, if you wouldn't mind. Starlight nodded, and Felicity seemed pleased, leaving the room and closing the door gently behind her. End of chapter 671